Hello, welcome to New Life Assembly. I am Topa Sonia Olu. We are so glad to have you with us this morning. We know that God is going to speak to you through this service. We have just finished our time of worship together and we're about to go into today's message. But before that, we want to say thank you for your continued faithfulness and generosity as you give to support the work that God is doing through New Life Assembly. You can also give online at any time at rccgnla.org.uk. It's now time for the message. Pastor has an uplifting message to share with us. Following that message, I'll be back to share some more important announcements with you. So let's open our hearts to what God wants to speak to us about today. Good afternoon, church. Happy Sunday. Um, I want to continue with the word for the month in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. And let's bow our head as we go into the word. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins and our trespasses. Lord, I ask that you take absolute control of this day. Let your name be glorified and magnified in all that we do in the name of Jesus. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Go beyond my prayer, my preparation. Send your word to us. Let it heal us. Let it deliver us. Let it set us free. Let it put to shame the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus. And at the end of this day, Lord, let your name be highly exalted and glorified. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Once again, welcome to our service today. I will take... My scripture from Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans, the 8th chapter. Verse 37, reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. The Bible says, yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. The Bible makes us realize as children of God, we are perpetually victorious people. We may not always see it. We may not always feel it. We may not always live like that. But it's true nonetheless. This passage of scripture has brought comfort and hope to the hearts of believers for 2,000 years. It reminds us that we're more than conquerors in spite of how things appear to us or in spite of how we may feel about circumstances around us. There are so many instances from the Bible of God bringing miraculous victory to his people Israel. Israel, humanly speaking, was no match for the enemies, but God told them not to be afraid and that he would fight their battles for them. In Exodus 14.14, 14, the Bible says, The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now I want to pray and declare the same word into the life of every man, every woman and every child that the Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace in the name of Jesus. In Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse 19, the Bible says they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. That tells me that whatever challenges we are confronted with, we will always prevail against these challenges. These challenges will not prevail against us because God is with us. A man that has God's backing is more than a conqueror. Let's look at our main test. 
In this passage of scripture, I can see three phrases that I want us to look and take a few facts from there. Firstly, more than a conqueror. Secondly, in all these things. And, th and thirdly, through him who loved us. Let's take a look one at a time. More than a conqueror. The phrase more than conquerors refers to those who gain a surpassing victory. It means to be completely victorious, to carry away an overwhelming victory. It literally has the idea of us being a champion of champions. That's what the Bible says we are. But that is not how we always feel. Most of the time, most believers I know seem to be overwhelmed by life and its challenges. When Paul writes that we're more than a conqueror, he uses a tense that suggests a present tense active situation. In other words, he's saying that Christians keep on winning a glorious victory. He's saying that even when all of life is arrayed against us, we are still more than conquerors. Regardless of how things feel to us or look to us, we are still more than conquerors. That is the clear testimony of the word of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, the Bible says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to give thanks to God always for the victory we enjoy. Victory of protection, victory of healing, victory over our enemies, victory over the coronavirus, victory uh, that seems to distract our children. The list is endless. Secondly, Paul says that we're more than conquerors in all these things. Most of us have the idea that victory occurs when we're living lives that are free from troubles, affliction, and pains. Paul says that reality is something far different. We are more than conquerors in spite of everything the world and the devil can throw at us. The, these things Paul is referring to can be found in verses 33 to 35. Let's take a look at this list of problems. You will see that many of these things are common. The common part of life. In verse 33, the Bible says, What shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Church, we are more than conqueror, in spite of those who charge, who, who charge us, in spite of all those who bring charge against us. We are victorious over all those who will challenge our relationship with the Lord. God has justified us and nothing will ever change his mind. Verse 34 says, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us. Church, we are more than conquerors in spite of those who condemn, who condemn us. We are victorious over, who's, over those who will declare that we are worthy before the Lord. Jesus Christ died for us on the cross and shed his blood to save us, and no one can undo what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. Furthermore, the Bible says in that, in that verse that Jesus, is, Jesus makes intercession for us. Church, this should give you consolation. This should give you confidence. That whenever you are faced with challenges, Jesus is praying for you, is interceding for you. Verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Church, we are more than conquerors in spite of those who confound us. The world and the devil have 
ever been the enemies of the children of God. Their attacks are frequent and they are severe. In spite of everything they throw in our direction, we're still victorious over all the efforts to defeat us and to, to, to destroy us. Let's take a, 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 a look at the list of attacks the children of God face in this life. Tribulation. Distress. Persecution. Famine. Nakedness. Peril. Sword. No. When you look at the word tribulation, it means to be squeezed or to feel pressure. Many a times we're pressured by the challenges of life. We're pressured by our career, by, you know, even things that surround us. This is the common problems all people face. But Jesus reminds us in John the 16th chapter, verse 33, he said, This thing I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. There's this perception that once you give your life to Christ, that is the end of your trouble. In a way it is, but it doesn't mean that we will still not face those challenges. But what God is saying to us, that in our challenges, he will be there for us. He will continue to pray for us, that these challenges will not overwhelm us. Because in Job chapter 14 verse 1, the Bible says, Man who is born of woman is of, full, is a few, is of few days and full of trouble. So we can see that from the moment we're born, we're faced with the challenges of life. We talk of persecution, suffering inflicted on us because of our relationship with Christ. We talk of famine, a lack of necessary resources. Uh, we talk of nakedness. Uh, we... There are many believers that face these challenges day in, day out. But we thank God that he has been so merciful to us to ensure that we have victory over all of these challenges that may come our way. Thirdly, let's look at the phrase, through him who loved us. Paul tells us that the only reason that we're victorious in this life is through him that loved us. Our victory, church, does not lie within ourselves. Our victory lies and rests in him and him alone. We do not deserve to be qualified as more than a conqueror only but for his love he qualified us. He proved his love to us by sending his only begotten son according to John chapter 3 verse 16. In Romans the 5th chapter verse 8 the Bible says but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that <coughs> while we were still sinners Christ died for for us. Church, the love of God for his children is so vast, so deep, it's so far reaching that God wants us to wants us to know that nothing, absolute nothing, can separate us from his great love for us. Verses 38 and 39 to 39 are commentary on the depth and the breadth, height and length of God's love for his people. Paul tells us that none of these things mentioned in these verses can separate us from the love of God. The word separate means to divide, to put asunder, to divorce, or to put away. 
The word able in verse 38 means to have power. In other words, none of the things people fear so much has any power to divide us from his awesome love. Not coronavirus, not the impact it will have on the economy, not sickness, not death. Absolutely nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. When we go through those things, we need to be assured in our hearts that even the pains, the sorrows, and affliction of life are evidence of God's love for us. Paul knew his share of the trials and torment of life. He, he gave us a glimpse of that in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, so, sorry, chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse 23. A day ministry servants of Christ, the Messiah, I am talking like one beside himself, but I am more with far more extensive and abundant labors, with far more imprisonments, beating with countless stripes and frequently at the point of death. Five times I received from the hands of the Jews forty latches, all but one. Three times I have been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned three times. I have been aboard a shipwreck at sea uh, all night and a day. I have spent adrift on the deep. We ought to give thanks to God because none of us have experienced half of what Apostle Paul experienced. Verse 26, it says, Many times on journeys exposed to perils from rivers, perils from bandits, perils from my own nation, perils from the Gentiles, perils in the city, Perils in the desert places, perils in the sea, perils from those posing as believers but destitute of Christian knowledge and pity, in toil and hardship, watch, watching often through sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, frequently driven to fast by want, not that he wants to fast, but because he has no food on his on his table, in cold and exposure and lack of clothing. We ought to give thanks to God for all the things that he does for us. For food over our heads, for clothes over our back. And verse 20 is, and besides those things that are without, there is a daily inescapable pressure of my care and anxiety for all the churches. These are some of the things and challenges that Apostle Paul was faced with. You know, Paul knew his share of the trials and torments of life. He tells us in verses 38 that he's persuaded. That phrase in the perfect tense, that phrase is in the perfect tense. It means that Paul stands convinced that nothing can change his mind about the matter. And church, this is how we should feel. We should be persuaded that nothing, absolutely nothing, will separate us from the love of Christ. Paul understood and he knows that God knows what he's doing and that the saints can count on the boundless eternal love of Jesus Christ to see them through whatever they may face in this life. He that was Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, we turn our Bibles to in Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verse 16, and this is a prayer that Paul Pray for the Ephesians believers. And I am speaking such blessing upon us this day. May the Lord grant may the Lord grant us out of the rich treasure of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit, himself indwelling our innermost being and personality. May Christ through our faith 
actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in our hearts. May we be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. May we have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love, what is the breadth and the length and height and depth of it. May we really come to know practically through experience for ourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that we may be filled through all our being unto all the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desire, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout generation forever and ever. Amen. So be it in Jesus' name. Church, as I conclude this message, our prayer should be that we would accept by faith the promises of God concerning the victory we have in Jesus. Our prayer should always be that God will help us to live out that victory every day. In spite of how things look to us, how we feel about circumstances. So I want us to go ahead and pray these two, two prayer points. And say, Father, help us to accept by faith the promise, your promises concerning the victory we have in Jesus. Father, help us to accept the promises of God concerning the victory we have in Jesus. Lord, this is our prayer, this is our cry, this is our heartbeat, that we will accept by faith the promises of God concerning our victory, the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. And also I want us to pray that God will help us to live out that victory every day of our life in spite of how things may look, in spite of how we feel. Father, we pray in the name of your son Jesus Christ to help us to live that victory every day in spite of how things look to us or how we feel about circumstances in the name of Jesus. Father, this is our heartbeat, this is our cry, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen and Amen. May the Lord bless you. May our Father in heaven make you more than a conqueror in every facet of your life in the name of Jesus. For the victory that God has given us true Christ, may we live that victory on a daily basis in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We worship you, we honor you. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. At this time, I want to invite you to give your offerings and tithes. Details of how to give are now on the screen.
Good day, church. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Those who are joining online and joining from your homes, wherever you're joining from. Thank you very much. Um, today I will be praying over the offering. Shall we bow our heads and just pray together? Father, Lord, we thank you. Almighty God, we give you praise. We thank you for another opportunity to worship together, to declare your goodness together in the land of the living. We thank you, Lord, because it is you that gives us power to make wealth and you give us wisdom to return a token of everything that you have blessed us with. Father, dear Lord, we pray that even as we have given to you today, you would accept our offering, you would accept us in the name of Jesus. And we pray, oh God, that these offerings that we have brought to you today will be used for the furtherance of your work on earth in the name of Jesus. And for those who have not been able to give for one reason or the other, Father, we pray that you would enlarge their coast. We pray that you would provide for them so that they will be able to give oh God, to your work. We pray, oh God, that there shall be breakthrough, oh God, for as many that are having to deal with loss of jobs or lo loss of finances, Jehovah, we pray that speedily, oh God, you would answer. Father, speedily, oh God, you would make a way. Speedily, oh God, you would provide, oh God, so that they will be careful to give you praise. They will be careful, oh God, to return to you that of, of, of that which you have blessed them with. Father, we'll continue to give you praise because we know that you've got our back and we know that everything, oh God, is working together for our good. Father, Lord, we give you all the praise. We honor you. We magnify you because even when we have been faithless, oh God, you continue to be faithful. Thank you, Most High God, for accepting us. Thank you, Most High God, for accepting our offerings. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Let's pray on our thighs. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, our God, our brother, we say thank you that we go and give a temple of our offerings, of our tithes into your storehouse, O oh Lord. Thank you for the obedience that all of us who brought our tithes into your storehouse, O oh Lord. Thank you for our jobs, our cars, and our businesses, O oh Lord. I thank you come to sustain us in this time of pandemic, oh Lord. Is anyone of us who couldn't give any time to come to the unemployed, oh Lord? Father, come and show them what they can do, oh Lord. And make a way for them in the wilderness, oh Lord. Father, see this, uh, this task shall, shall multiply much more in the physical. Shall be used more for the preparation of your works, oh Lord. But I wish you thank you, thank you, thank you. And I shall say this time next week by God's grace, we have much more to bring into your storehouse. And I shall give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Again, we thank you for your faithfulness and generosity in giving to support the work that God is doing at New Life Assembly. Remember, you can give at any time. Details of how to give are available at rccgnla.org.uk. If this is your first time here, we are so grateful you chose to spend part of your weekend with us and we hope you make New Life Assembly your church home. We would like to know you, so if you are watching via our website, please click the connect button below this video to fill out a connection card. If you are watching on YouTube, you may also connect with us at any time. Just go to rccgnla.org.uk to fill out a connection card. Once again, thanks so much for worshipping with us today. There is a lot happening at New Life Assembly. I would like to share with you things we have planned for you and your family this week. The word of the month of June is found in the book of Romans 8, 37. The theme for the month is more than a conqueror. Kickstarting our working week and committing it into God's hand, we have our Monday morning prayer meeting. This is a conference call only meeting and it's from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. On Tuesdays from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., Pastor Topper hosts a half hour session via telephone conference. The session is themed, he sent his word. Our regular Wednesday midweek service is now a prayer service for our church, our communities and our country. This service runs for 30 minutes via telephone conference and it starts at 7 p.m. On Wednesday, 1st of July, we'll be having our Holy Communion for July. The Holy Communion is via telephone conference and it starts at 7 p.m. On Friday, we have a conference call only prayer meeting from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. On Saturday, we have a conference call only prayer meeting which starts at 8 a.m. and ends by 9 a.m. On Sundays like this, when we meet, 
we start our day with a half hour prayer session from 9am to 9.30am. Following this, we have our Sunday school from 9.45am to 10.55am and the main service starts at 11am. The church will be observing a corporate fast through the month of July. The theme of the fast is to thank God for the first half of the year and the prayer for the second half, we are all encouraged to take part. For guidelines on the fast, please visit the church website. We will now have prayers for those that have celebrated their birthdays and wedding anniversaries in the last week. Father, we thank you for those whose birthday it has been this week and today. We give all glory to your name. We thank you, Lord of Israel, Father, for good health for them. We thank you for sparing their lives. We thank you, Lord of Israel, that concerning them, we haven't had bad news, especially in this period. All glory to your name in Jesus' name. We once again commit them into your hands. And we pray, Lord of Israel, that you be well with them. We thank you because they will be blessed in the city and blessed uh, in the country. Blessed as they go out and blessed as they come, come in. And in your kingdom, they shall not be found wanting. We give all glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you for your children whose wedding anniversary has been this week and today. We give all glory to your name. We thank you for your word that says, What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. We thank you for the union. We thank you for the fruits of the union, for their children. We thank you, Lord of Israel, for their jobs. We thank you, Lord, for good health. We thank you, Lord of Israel, for the victories in these unions, and we thank you for the challenges that have come. Thank you for seeing them through. We also thank you, Lord of Israel, that you are the third party in these homes. We once again commit them into your hands, and we thank you because it will be well with them, well with their children, well with their grandchildren in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we give all glory to your name. We thank you because every time we hear from them, it will always be good news. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Good, good afternoon once again, church. I want to use this uh, forum to announce that uh, by His grace, we we start our corporate fast from the 1st of July to the 31st of July. Uh, we'll be meeting to pray every day between the hours of 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. I want to believe God that it will be a time of purification, a time of sanctification, a time of refreshing and a time of intimacy with our God. I want to encourage you to please join us as we embark, embark on this 30, 31 days of fasting. Um, you will agree with me that uh, the the Lord has been faithful to us in so many ways, uh, especially during this period of the pandemic. Uh, he has kept us alive, has kept us safe, has kept our loved ones safe and alive. And we ought to give thanks to God. So I'm also believing that it will be a time of Gratitude to God, a time of thanksgiving, a time of praise to our God, and a time also to commit the latter part of this year in his able hand. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's be expectant. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. And I know that God is true to his word. Be expectant to receive from him. Be expectant to hear from him. Be expectant to have a closer walk with him. Be determined. Make up your mind that nothing is going to stop you from waiting on him this season. It is a season that we all need to hear from God. To hear what he's saying concerning his church, 
concerning our own lives, concerning our future, even concerning the future of the entire world. I'm believing that God will speak to you, will speak to me expressly as we wait on him. God bless you. God will give you the grace to wait in the name of Jesus. Your waiting will not be in vain. The Lord will accept you. We accept your sacrifice of waiting in the name of Jesus. As we, as we start, we're going to commence with our Holy Communion on Wednesday. I want to also encourage you that as many of you that can make it, please dial in. Let's take communion together so that God, will, so that we take Christ with us on this journey. Praise the name of the Lord. Have a wonderful week. Have a week filled with testimonies in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Details of all church activities, including events mentioned in the announcement, can be found on our website at rccgnla.org.uk. Thank you for worshipping with us today. Have a wonderful week and God bless you.